What's going on everybody? It's PJ here with the SRNA Drip. And today I wanna to talk about my stats that got me into CRNA school. And everybody is just so obsessed with the stats. And what was your GPA? And what was your GRE score? And what did you do? And where? Blah, blah, blah. Honestly, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be individualized to that pool of applicants in the first place. But I still want to give you guys an example of what I was working with. So let's get into it. So first thing on the list is my degree, and I graduated from Coppin State University in 2017 with my bachelor's in nursing. So that's definitely a requirement. You have to have your bachelor's from an accredited university. If you have your ADN or you are in an ADN program, you can still be on a very streamlined track to get into CRNA school fairly quickly by one, start working in the ICU once you graduate, and then do your bachelor's online while you're working. That way you can obtain that one year minimum requirement while you're getting your bachelor's. And then once that year is done, you'll have your bachelor's and your minimum requirement for experience and you can start applying. So, and honestly, it's probably cheaper to do it that way. I did the bachelor's because I did have a scholarship for tennis, so I was going wherever the money was but it may be cheaper to do your associates and then transition into your bachelor's. So do your research, find out what works best for you. Next is the heavy hitter, the GPA. Oh my God, what was your GPA? What's my GPA? Is it gonna blah, 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 blah. So I did talk about the GPA in uh, my Is Your GPA Good Enough video, but I graduated with a cumulative 3.4 and my science GPA was a 4.0. My nursing cash GPA was a 3.1. So nursing cash allows you to apply to multiple schools that you know from one source, but they have this calculated generated GPA that they use once you input all of the classes that you've taken in your undergrad career. And it formulates a GPA based off of that. So it may differ depending on what classes they consider what classes they don't use. So mine went down about 0.3 points. Some people might go up. It just depends on whatever you took in your undergrad coursework. One of the schools that I got accepted into used my nursing cash GPA, which was a 3-1, like I said, and they actually mentioned it in my interview. They were like, you got a 3-1, what's that about? But your sciences are 4-0. So be ready to explain any potential adversities. I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think they were just kind of shocked by the difference between my science all A's and then my cumulative 3-1, which everybody is gonna, is gonna be different. It's never gonna be the same. Not everyone has a 4.0 or a 3.8, so don't get too hung up on that. And my other school, they didn't use my nursing cast GPA because they didn't use nursing cast, so they used the 3.4 and my 4.0 for my sciences. For my science GPA, I didn't take any crazy science classes. I took whatever I needed to take to get into my nursing program, which was a biology class, chemistry, just regular chemistry, not organic, anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, and microbiology. Those were the five science classes that I took, and I didn't take anything extra after that. I also didn't take any graduate level courses. I said that I wanted to apply with what I had first to see where it would get me and it got me in. So I'm glad that I didn't you know, dish out that money to take a graduate level course when I didn't need it. If you have some discrepancies with your GPA, if it's really on the border or a, under a 3.0, then I would recommend taking a, a, G, a graduate level course but I would challenge you to first look at your sciences that you've already taken and figure out if there's anything that you should retake there first before taking a totally different graduate level course. So if your anatomy and physiology one grade is a C, I would retake that class first before taking a graduate level course because you still need to correct that. So make sure you look at your GPA and know what you have and know where your weaknesses are and fix it according to the grades that you have prior. Next up is the GRE. And I avoided the GRE like the black plague, I'm telling you. I did not want to take that test. 
I remember after going to a diversity and CRNA event at Emory University, I was on the uh, mock interview panel and they gave us all GRE, new big thick GRE books to study from and I was just so pumped. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take the GRE, yeah, yeah. I opened that book, I was like, what is this? So I put it off to the side. I said, I'm just going to apply to the schools that don't require the, G the GRE. And that's what I did. And I landed two interviews without the GRE. One school I got waitlisted for, the other school I did get accepted into. But before I got accepted, I said, you know what? I do need to just, just go ahead and take it. So I studied for it and I really didn't take it too seriously. My goal was to get over a 290 and uh, I did uh, very minimum preparation. I used Magoosh and the videos on Magoosh are excellent. They are very detailed. They have various test plans depending on when you want to take your GRE. I tried to follow the test plans and do all the videos and the practice and it just was not working out for me. So what I did was I said, well, let me just take a practice test and see where I am to begin with and see if I actually need to study so much. So I took a practice test and the first one I took, I was very relaxed about it. I was on the couch or in my bed and on my phone and just answering questions. And I got a 293, I believe. And I said, okay, well, maybe this is just a, a fluke. Let me take it again a little bit more seriously. So I took it again and I got a 298. And I said, okay, I still hadn't really studied. I just was a little bit more focused when I took it. I said, okay, okay. And then I took one more and I got a 295. So I said, okay, I'm just going to focus on the seems to be trends that I'm getting wrong on these practice tests and then just take the exam. So I found out what I was missing uh, on those practice exams and just touched up on those concepts in the videos and the practice problems. And then I said, I'm just gonna take the test. I'm not going to wreck my mind over this, this test. So I scheduled my exam. I took maybe one or two more practice tests right before, and then I, I, I took it and I got a 294, so it was still in that ballpark area of where my practice exam scores were, and my writing was a 3.5, and honestly, I watched two videos on Magoosh on my way to take my exam, and I'm glad I did because they were very helpful. And I'm naturally a good writer, so it wasn't too hard for me, but I still needed those videos to guide me on how to write for the GRE writing portion. So make sure you take the practice exams and figure out where you land and what you really need to focus on when you're studying so that you're not taking this crazy amount of time to study for this test and you can easily just get it done fast and start applying to schools. So experience, I have been a nurse for a little bit over two years currently and when I received my first acceptance, I was a nurse for a year and six months. And when I received my second acceptance, I was a nurse for a year and nine months. So they were pretty close uh, together. Both were under two years. So, and I believe when I turned in my applications, I was a little bit less than a year and a half of a nurse. So as long as you have that one year minimum for most schools, you can apply. Don't let that hang you up. Don't let the fact that you may not be in a level one trauma center yet hold you back from sending out an application. Like I learned from my dean of my undergraduate program years ago, the worst they can say is no. But you don't give them an opportunity to say no if you don't apply. So just get the applications out. Make sure they're nice and cohesive and you're putting your all into the applications, but don't let certain things hinder you from turning in the applications. It will never be an ideal situation for you to just get everything done. You're gonna have to build on top of the pieces that you already have. So just turn in the applications once you have what you need. I worked two different ICUs within my two years. I was moving around very quickly, I know. And they were both in the surgical ICU. My first unit was 
a 14 bed unit. It was still level one trauma, but it was a very small high acuity unit. And we got a good mixture of mainly surgical patients. We did get a lot of medical patients. And actually I hated medical ICU patients at the time. When I left to go to a strictly surgical ICU, I missed MICU patients so much. And I never thought that I would ever say that, but I really did. And then my second ICU was strictly surgical and we had a heavy focus on transplant populations and rejected transplants and necrotizing pancreatitis and uh, we did uh, liver transplants, kidney transplants, simultaneous liver and kidneys, simultaneous pancreas and kidneys. It was a lot of transplant focused patients uh, along with other things as well that you would have surgery for and need the ICU after your surgery or even before your surgery. For my CCRN, I took it at the one year mark flat. I did not waste any time. And some people make the mistake of waiting till your year is up to start studying for the CCRN. No, start studying before. That way, when your one year mark comes, you can actually apply to sit for the exam. So for me, I started studying about three months before my one year mark hit and I used past CCRN questions and barren CCRN questions. Past CCRN questions is very great for knowledge based information. You learn so much through those questions and going through each body systems and just answering the questions and making notes of what you don't know. The barren CCRN questions the style of the questions to me resembled the actual exam more than past CCRN. And I read the Baron CCRN book a week before I took my exam. And it's a very easy read. It's very quick. It's bullet points. They highlight out things that are very important that you really need to know. And it's, it's, it's legit. So I would recommend those two study materials to study for your CCRN. If you are a peds nurse, they do have resources for the peds CCRN because it is a little bit different and uh, it works the same. It's, it's very inf informative for what you need for your exam. So I don't know too much about the peds CCRN exam as far as what's on it because I know nothing about kids at the moment. I mean, I could probably save a kid's life if I needed to, but all the intricates and, and details miss me. And my other certifications, ACLS, BLS, PALS, you definitely need those. PALS, you may not need it before you apply, but you might need it at the time of your interview or before school starts. So for my first school, they wanted me to have my PALS before the interview. My second school, I just needed to have it before the program starts, but I went ahead and just did everything. I didn't want to go into the interview saying, oh, I still need this or I still need this. I wanted to have everything presented for them. So if you can, if you have the money, just just get it done. It's, it's not that hard. So yeah, I think we talked about all of my stats for all you statisticians out there. Um, we talked about degree, we talked about GPA, GPAs, because there's multiple. We talked about the cumulative science and the nursing cash GPA. We talked about my experience, certifications, GRE. So I think we hit, hit everything. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. I do read all my comments. It's not just like this, it's that many now, but I do read them all and I try to respond to them all. And uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and uh, yeah, be on the lookout for my next video. Let me know what you want to see, what you want me to talk about, and uh, I can just come on set and uh, make a video. So with that being said, I'm out.